The actress reflects on both the triumphs and missteps of the Fraser family's arrival in America. The time-traveling romance of Claire and Jamie Fraser has been a hit for decades now, first as a massively successful series of books, then as an acclaimed TV adaptation. But viewers who only started keeping up with the Frasers when Outlander the TV series launched in 2014 were decidedly mixed on season 4, as the show traveled further from its original premise, Jamie and Claire's Scottish romance, to both the new world and a broader cast of characters. Series star Katrina Balfe spoke with Vanity Fair about the challenges of depicting a faithful period drama that doesn't alienate the show's modern and progressive audience and where season 5 will take the Frasers next. In its first two seasons, the plot of Outlander kept its characters primarily in Europe, where the war efforts of the British, the Scottish, and the French provided the high-stakes historical backdrop for Jamie and Claire Fraser's will-they-slash-won't-they time-traveling romance. Here, we watched primarily white characters with a variety of plummy accents duke it out for love, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The show's sex-positive message, Scottish-driven rebellion, and spirited female lead guaranteed that a large portion of its audience would be thirsty for stories with progressive attitudes told through the lens of history. But that dynamic hit a wall in Season 3, when Claire and Jamie followed their young nephew, Ian, to the New World. There, the Frasers, such spirited defenders of Scottish freedom had to confront the realities of both African slavery and Native American dislocation. How do you keep your European leads sympathetic when their very existence depends on the exploitation of the non-white population? Jamie and Claire Cumming have empathy for the Native Americans, Balfe admitted, and yet they still become landowners on land taken from people who were originally there. Diana Gabaldon's books, many written more than 20 years ago aren't spotless when it comes to grappling with these challenges, and Outlander's writers and producers have very consciously made some tweaks to the narrative in order to balance Claire and Jamie's American adventures with a more nuanced portrayal of the non-white cultures they encounter there. Both Jamie and Claire's discomfort with the slaves working kindly on Aunt Jo Casta's plantation, River Run, and their interactions with various native tribes have been somewhat rewritten to cast the Frasers as even better allies than they were in the novel. But as Balf put it, One of the biggest hurdles we have in our show is that the story is primarily told through Claire and Jamie's eyes. Telling things the way they were from the perspective of people who wrote down history, usually oppressors, you're going to get a limited perspective. We're telling the story of the white immigrants in America through their eyes. That's been a difficulty that we've had. Though Gabaldon has come under fire in the past for the depiction of non-white characters in her novels, Balf pointed out that some of the chapters in the source material are told much more through the perspective of one of the slaves on the plantations. She wondered if that point of view could perhaps have been given more weight in the Stars series as well, if the season had had more episodes. But it's not what our show is, she said. Sunday's Finale much of which features Jamie, Claire, and Ian at odds with a combative group of Mohawks, comes only one week after a viral video of Covington Catholic High School students staring down Omaha tribe elder Nathan Phillips pushed the national conversation towards readdressing the way Native Americans have always been mistreated in this country. It's sensitive timing, to say the least. Whether or not we've been making missteps sometimes, Balf said. What I hope we do is spark a conversation, shine a light on that time. What the genesis is for what America is dealing with today. There were people here for millennia before Europeans came and settled, and this is a reminder of the roots of how American democracy came to be. Balf has been playing Claire Fraser for long enough now that it's only natural she would feel some sense of ownership over the character. Of course. She laughingly replied when I asked if she ever pushed back on the way her character was written this season. Outlander saw a large influx of new writers in seasons 3 and 4. What's great is that they bring a new perspective, Balf said. But for sure there are times that the character you've been building is maybe not what they've written. Sometimes you have resistance to something because it doesn't feel honest. Sometimes you have resistance to something just because it's new. Sometimes you're like, oh. I wish we hadn't done that. But when asked about her favorite parts of the season, 
Balf pounced on the meaty mother-daughter moments she was able to share with Sophie Skelton's Brianna. Brianna's sexual assault in season 4 is another storyline that Outlander's writers and producers decided to alter slightly, in a nod to the sensitivity of the current discussions around the hashtag MeToo and Time's Up movements. But in the aftermath of her ordeal, Outlander doesn't shy away from Claire and Brianna discussing both the trauma of the event and the options of their resulting pregnancy. In this aspect, the source material needed no updates, Balf said. These are plot points from the story that we have to follow from the book and Diana's books follow the aftermath. What does, sexual assault, do not just to the victim but to the victim's family? At that time, it would only have been shame on the woman. Those are mentalities that persist today. If a man or a woman is assaulted, the victim is shamed and it's their fault. But it was nice to see modern women talking about choices regarding ownership around your own body and your own fertility. Unfortunately, these conversations have become so politicized that people are afraid to have them. It wasn't that we stuck them in because of personal opinions, it's in the books. Diana was bringing up these ideas 20 years ago. Brianna's entire season 4 plot is part of a larger widening of the story beyond the magnetic pull between Claire and Jamie. We've opened up the show this season to include Brianna and Roger and Marsley and Fergus and Murtaugh and Joe Casta, Balf pointed out. This move, though faithful to the books, has split the fandom. Fergus, Marsley, Murtaugh, Ian, Laura John Gray, and Rollo all remain quite popular, but Brianna's arc has been more hit and miss. And Richard Rankin's Roger, who had a winning introduction to the show in Series 3, alienated progressive, sex-positive Outlander fans in Season 4, thanks to the character's regressive attitudes towards sex, Brianna, and gender roles. But, as ever, Outlander got its core couple, Claire and Jamie, right in Season 4. Balf said that her favorite part of the season, a sweet and sexy bath scene in Episode 6, centered on the original duo, that bath scene was so romantic and beautiful. It felt important that we still put emphasis on these intimate moments between Jamie and Claire. Here, Outlander makes up for some of Roger's boorish attitudes by depicting the Frasers, now considerably older than the 30-something actors who portray them, as being as sexually dynamic as ever. I think people have misinterpreted sometimes when we've said, we're not doing the same thing as season 1, this is a mature relationship that we mean the intimacy or the passion is gone, Balf said. That's not true at all, but it changes. No one's relationship is a constant. Everyone goes through peaks and valleys as you get older, as you know each other more. As of the finale, the Frasers not only have a significant amount of silver in their hair, they are also brand new grandparents. But don't expect that to change anything. Balf observed that massively devoted Outlander fans are often, though not exclusively, an older demographic, I've gotten so many letters and gotten to meet so many women who love to see the passion and love they have in their own marriages and in their own relationships reflected in our show. I think people have been starved to see that reflected back at them, because I don't think society values that as much. Once we turn 50, 60, 70, it doesn't mean that intimate aspects of your life disappear. So. What will season 5 hold beyond more romance for Claire and Jamie? Well, despite Sony TV's co-president Chris Parnell telling Entertainment Weekly back in 2017 that the series hopes to avoid another Droughtlander the cute fan nickname for the long gap between seasons, Balf said that the show's renewal didn't quite come in time, the pickup came later than we would have needed to have a tighter gap between seasons. Early rumors suggest that fans may not get any new episodes until 2020. When the pickup for more Outlander did come, however, it was for both seasons 5 and 6, and that security, Balf said, has allowed the writer's room to let the story breathe. Balf hasn't seen any season 5 scripts yet herself. The finale's cliffhanger sees Jamie receive official orders that put him in direct conflict with Murtaugh and the regulators. This. Balf reasonably observed, will be the big storyline of season 5. She predicted an imminent battle between the regulators and Jamie, who is a subject of Governor Tryon. We know the Revolutionary War is on the horizon. That will be the main focus, 
I suppose, a gearing up of various people on various signs and what that means. Season 4 lay some tidy ground there with sympathetic characters like Lord John Gray and Aunt Jo Casta, who are already very much on the wrong side of history. Jamie and Claire, no doubt, will be caught in the middle. Balfe said that the fifth season will also focus on the growing community at Fraser's Ridge, where Marsley, Fergus, Brianna, and Roger will all join Claire and Jamie as they continue to grow their families. Production designer John Gary Steele recently gave fans a little tease of what's to come there when he said that the Fraser's new home, aka the big house, was under construction. Obviously we're going to base it on the fiery cross, Balfe said, naming the next installment in Gabaldon's book series, but I'm not sure which parts of it the writers are going to keep. Gabaldon's fifth book is one of her longest. When it debuted in 2001, People magazine called The Fiery Cross a 350-page story that spills across 979 pages. So it's probable the Outlander writing staff will no longer feel it has to include every twist of the tale for fear of deviating from the source material, and angering very vocal book fans. At this point, there's simply not room for all of Gambledon's work in a season of television. But Balfe is excited for the potential in the show's future. As shows go on longer and longer, it becomes more difficult to keep things new and exciting, she said, but the Outlander team is making sure nobody is resting on their laurels. We're thinking about things we want to explore further down the line that's not just plot. Does that mean more experimentation? We can only hope. What's the point of coming the new world if you're not going to be brave?